So myths and hysteria about using opioids for non-cancer pain. I, I could spend eight hours discussing that. Um, I, um, I, I do have a blog actually that, that I started kind of around some of this stuff, these, these, these myths, because it's so aggravating to me the way that the media sensationalizes a number of the issues around opioid use for non-cancer pain. And, and the truth is, when people have said that I'm a cheerleader for opioid use, that couldn't be further from the truth. I take a lot of patients off of opioids that, that really don't belong on them, either because they don't work well for the disorder they have, or because they're, they have a high risk. I put some patients on opioids because I, I feel like they need them, they've tried other therapies, and or I know that other therapies will not work for their kind of disorder. Medullary sponge disease, for example, uh, failed back syndrome with arachnoiditis. You need to have opioids for those kinds of non-malignant pain syndromes. So, um, uh, I mean, I, I counsel patients extensively about why they should not be on opioids, and also in certain cases about why they should be on, on opioids. But think about, about this. So, a couple of years ago, we had a new formulation of extended release hydrocodone. And it wasn't abuse deterrent. The media went wild. But not only did the media go, go wild, we had politicians all over the country jumping on this, not because, now, now some of them care, I'm sure, all right, but some of them are looking for votes. And I said, well, oh, look what I did, and I fixed the opioid problem in my state. So we had, so the, the, the brand that came out first was Zohydro, now of course we have Zy, uh, High Singla. But when Zohydro came out, it was not abuse deterrent. So people jumped all over this, they said, oh, you know, we can't have these non-abuse deterrent drugs in our state, and blah, 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 and they interviewed physicians, like from all over the country. So LA Times, Boston Globe, uh, New York Times, uh, Chicago Tribune, I don't want to leave anybody out, I want to be fair here. But they all had these articles in there and, and, and they, they interviewed people that, they just said the most wild thing. So, so in the LA Times, some of us could have saying, oh, you know, this is ridiculous, we don't need Zohydro, it's five times more potent than, than regular hydrocodone. And I'm thinking, no, that, Hydrocodone is hydro. Hydrocodone can't be more potent than hydrocodone. It's a matter of taking 30 milligrams that is extended release over 24 or, or, or 12 hours versus splitting it up into six doses. Just wild stuff like that. So I, I wrote a blog on that, and it was what weighs more, uh, a pound of uh, feathers or a pound of zohydro or a pound of hydrocodone. So I mean, the sensationali the, the sensationalization is just just absurd. It is just absurd, and, and I really think that pharmacists are in a position to work with, with media, um, to, to try and make them understand. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just criminal, the way that these things are, are expressed in, in the media. And, uh, you know, the general patient is not going to know. Some healthcare providers won't know. If somebody says, this hydrocodone is five times more potent, maybe somebody will think there was some kind of, somehow the pharmaceutical prepared to be more potent. But hydrocodone can never be more potent than hydrocodone. It's hydrocodone. You know, so, so it's, just, it's just crazy what goes on.